Neil from Hollywood, you're on the air with Joe Escalante. Uh, yes, thanks for taking my call. Neil Styles here. Trademark is the issue. It seems a punk rock band has done a, a parody of the logo of a magazine I'm in charge of. I, I dare say it, it's got to be illegal, isn't it? Wait, wait, they did a parody? Like on their album cover, they've created a parody? Yes, oh, awful thing. What's the name of your magazine? It's a Daily Variety. Hollywood's Bible, actually. Oh, the Daily Variety. All right, so you have the Daily Variety. They're the competitors of the Hollywood Reporter. They have a logo, says Daily Variety. Yes, yes. And actually, it seems these chaps have gone and written the name of their band in a logo that's resembling our trade publication. What is the name of the band? Mm. Dare I say I don't want to utter it on the show because I don't want to give them any publicity. Okay, well, um... In that case, let me just tell you that parodies are protected by the First Amendment. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. The name of the band is The Vandals, you understand this? The Vandals. And they've written their name in the box where they, we put daily. They've put their definite article, the, and then where we write variety, they've written Vandals. It's the same V, everything. It's quite Okay, old. The Vandals. Okay. Sounds kind of clever. Let's they see, use I... the same color, man. It's got to be a law against that, even in your savage nation. And and I notice you have an accent. Why you're where are you from? London, actually, London. In charge of the variety group, Daily Variety, the uh, Gotham Variety. What is that? Where Batman gets his news? <laughs> Funny. Listen, Daily Variety, Weekend Variety. It's all my varieties. Okay. Well, yes. you you might have a case here because oh, if someone's just nice. stealing your logo mm. and trading off it, yes. that could be an infringement, Indeed. or it, at the very least, a a unfair business practice could be punishable by state law. California state law. Yes, that'd be nice. Definitely unfair business practice taking our logo. However, the United States Constitution yes. and the U.S. Copyright Act mm. protect a lot of speech. Believe so we them. need to find out whether this is protected speech and therefore an infringement yes. of no one's rights okay. and not an unfair business practice. Mm. So let me ask you a question, Neil. Fire what away. exactly was the parody of? This is actually important. Was it a parody that had to do with your position in Hollywood, Uh, the nature of your business, Uh, or was it just somebody stealing the look and feel of your logo because they thought they could sell more albums with it? Oh, probably the latter. Awful, dreadful album called Hollywood Potato Chip, of all things. Awful punk rock. Shameful, really. Nothing like the legitimate punk rock of the late 70s during my heyday. I saw the Buzzcocks at the 100 Club, you know. Pete Shelley took a fancy to me as a lad. Okay, so the album's called Hollywood Potato Chip. Okay, so that sounds like it might be a parody of Hollywood. So far, it sounds like it might be legitimate protected speech. Oh, I doubt it. What does it look like? Oh, you know what? Let me just pull it up. Yes. I'll pull it up on my uh, internet. Yes, do that, please. Internet. Oh, I see it. Okay, Hollywood. It's got an old Hollywood feel. Old old bad Hollywood. Yeah, like a broken down Hollywood thing with... But we're not broken down. Searchlights. Hmm. Hollywood potato chip. Yeah. Yes. Potato chip. Yeah. What? Neil, I, I think you're be in a lot of trouble here because this looks like an actual parody of the thing that they're lifting. You're the Bible of Hollywood. They're making fun of Hollywood. Uh, I mean, this is how you qualify under the fair use doctrine. Uh, you have to be making fun directly of the thing that you're borrowing from. It's nature. And you can only use as much as you need to make the point. They're only using the the logo there. They're not making a magazine and using every page inside and supplanting your ability to sell magazines. Nobody is going to confuse this CD with a magazine. And you guys claim to be... What, what, what do you guys do again? Variety is the premier source of entertainment news since 1905, chap. We call it the Bible of Hollywood. Okay, okay. You call it the Bible of Hollywood? It's quite clever, don't you think? Do you ever parody the Bible? Well, I know where you're going. No, we do not parody the Bible. Okay, just be careful, because maybe the Bible's mad at you. (sighs) And they don't use the courts when they're mad. Anyways, if you call yourself the Bible of Hollywood, if you call yourself the premier source of entertainment news since 1905, and when I'm looking at this album cover here, and people that are listening, you could Google Hollywood potato chip... Uh, you would see this album cover. You can decide for yourself, too. If we're talking about the standard of does it parody the thing that it borrows from, yes, it does. It's clear. So you should probably leave them alone. It also seems to satisfy the transformative use doctrine. Like They have transformed your logo into something else that makes a comment. It is not a logo for a magazine anymore. It is more than that. They have taken your art and they have transformed it into new art. 
society has decided that kind of speech needs to be protected. Oh, really? So if you try to squash it, you might be violating their civil rights. Oh, this parody results from the fact that you call yourselves the Bible of the entertainment industry. Which we are. You have to expect people will parody something so grandiose, so oh, boastful, hardly. so outrageous, no. even blasphemous. Oh, sure. You didn't know you were going to get called a blasphemer when you called this program, did you? Blasphemous. You're blasphemous. Well, to get back to this theme, it looks like the theme is it's a parody of Hollywood making a statement that, you know, in this crumbling vision of Hollywood that they've put on this Hollywood potato chip album, they are saying that the glamour and dreams of Hollywood are finite. They are worldly. Boring. They come to an end. They dry uh, up and shrivel. I'm talking to John I think that's a fair statement. Not one that we should squash. Now, if you're arguing that this is a devaluation of your trademark because of the crumbled nature of Hollywood and you think they're trying to say that the daily variety is crumbling because print media is coming to an end, then argue that. You better go in there and say that's defamation or that is devaluation of your mark, but you better hope it's not protected speech. It's going to be an uphill battle for you, and you're going to lose it in the court of public opinion for sure. That will surely harm your mark and cost you real dollars. Are you quite finished? Actually, no, because I think this is kind of interesting. Let me ask you a question, Neil. Here we go. Outside of what this lawyer has told you, what's his name? A. Paul Williamson, Fulbright and Jaworski, 900 attorneys strong. Outside of the fact that they have told you that you must vigorously protect your mark or someone's going to take it and you're going to be harmed, your mark will be harmed if you don't sue this punk band. Has it caused any harm to your mark in your magazine that you can notice or even foresee? Oh, certainly. They've sent over the legal research. People have lost control of their minds. No, 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 no. Outside of what your lawyers have told you, who are trying to get you to do this because they're going to bill you a lot of money for doing this, and this is how they stay in business because they got their own problems, has any harm come to your magazine as the result of this being in the stores? Well... uh, And can you see any harm, any real harm, outside of what they've told you? I understand what you're saying, but that's not my job. The lawyer's job, you must trust the attorneys. They're telling you, you must trust these chaps. They make a lot of money. There are almost 1,000 of them at the firm. All agree, all agree. Harmful, dreadfully harmful yes. to the mark. Yes, but what do you think, Neil? That's not my job to interpret where the harm of the mark are. My job is to... My job is to... I'm the president of Variety. My job is to... My job is to... My job is to... My job is to make sure I keep my job. Well, my job is to help people, and your job is to keep your job. I'm, yes. I'm trying to help you keep your job because these guys are going to bilk you for hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees, no. and then you're going to have to lay off even more people oh, for nothing. No, and no. I think there's a great argument that this parody actually makes you more relevant to a younger audience because a, a punk band, no. a national or internationally known punk band, Please. has determined that you are still relevant enough to be the focal point of their parody of Hollywood. Do you have enough younger readers? What's the average age of your readership? I know. The average age is deceased. I've heard it before. You need new material. Please. Well, honestly, if they parodied Nikki Fink's Deadline Hollywood instead of the Daily Variety, wouldn't you be a little bit hurt? Dreadful woman. Dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. Who does she think My point is, is, are you really going to pay these attorneys to ruin your mark when when they're telling you that they're going to protect your mark, but they'd like you to pay them to ruin your mark. Does that seem right to you? Who are these lawyers again? Fulbright and Jaworski. I think I told you that. Fulbright and Jaworski, J. Paul Williamson, lead attorney, senior partner. I think he knows his stuff. Well, he may know his stuff. It, it, the, it looks like, and these firms, I've seen this before, they're, they're, the way they operate is a shakedown. They see a, something protected by free speech, they don't like it, they don't like the fair use doctrine, and they make money by shaking down people and saying you can't do that parody, and then when they can't Uh, afford the litigation, they just write them a check or they stop or whatever. That's the old game. They may know that game, but if he's a senior partner at a big firm like that, he's probably 70 years old. He has no idea how the internet works. He has no idea how you can get stung by this. You need to win this in the court of public opinion as well as in the legal courts. If you left it alone, it would cost you no legal fees and you could enjoy the relevance that this punk band is stirring up Mm. wouldn't cost you anything they'd probably give you a free copy of the album maybe a t-shirt you guys would be cool for a while the album will fade out the end no one even buys albums anymore so chap are you telling me there is no value to protecting your mark and when my lawyers say you must protect your mark they're just full of bollocks there is a legal you know doctrine that says 
and case laws held this up, that if you do not vigorously protect your, your mark, your mark can slip away from you. But it goes right. for like products like the Murphy bed. Murphy bed. The bed that pops down out of the wall. Ah, and yes. then everyone started calling their, their beds Murphy beds right. that popped out of the wall. I had one in or, my flat. And then they kind of lost their ability to own that mark because they didn't vigorously protect it. Right. Or the Band-Aid. Ah, the Band-Aid. The people, if someone says, hey, I've got new Band-Aids, i got a better brand of, a better version of Band-Aid, and here it is, got a Hello yeah. Kitty on it. Bandages, well, then bandages. Johnson & Johnson is going to send them a letter and say, you can't call it a Band-Aid. It's, it's a bandage. It's a bandage. We're the Band-Aids. And we're protecting our mark by sending you this letter. We're going to sue you if you try to use our mark to sell your product because right. now you're trading off our name. That's yes. protecting your mark. Yes. If someone calls their band the Vandals, we send them a letter and we say you can't call your band the Vandals. That's Sorry. protecting our mark. You if someone does a parody about. of the Vandals like they did on The Simpsons recently, Bully. one of his kids opened up his locker and there was a parody of the Vandals logo in the, on the locker. We don't send them a letter and say you can't parody our mark in that way. That's not protecting your mark. That's being an idiot. We enjoy the relevance of being mocked and parodied on The Simpsons. Yes. You got to enjoy the relevance of being mm-hmm. mocked and parodied. You're not even being mocked. You're just being parodied yes. by a relevant punk band. Mm-hmm. That makes you relevant. The Simpsons mm-hmm. is a relevant TV show. It makes our rele- us relevant. It's a parodies. We enjoy it. Going after them has nothing to do with protecting your mark. That's stifling free speech, creativity. It's just wrong. Oh, and if you lose, you got to watch out for a malicious prosecution suit. Indeed. They're exposing you to a lot of liability. This is actually awful. This is dangerous. You should call those guys right now. Get out of this thing. You called here for my opinion. In my opinion, Uh, this is a ripoff. People like this don't care about your mark. They only care about their pocketbooks and their billable Uh, hours. One more thing. Our lawyer said that if we do not pursue this, people will think we endorse this punk album. Look, Neil. It's Neil, right? Yes. If they parody your logo, people are going to think that the Daily Variety endorses this punk CD. Yes. Okay, I know you don't even believe that. No. So how is a court going to assign damages to that? You don't believe it. I don't believe it. No one would believe it. Where are the damages? Uh, well, so can you get out of this? Uh, actually, uh, easier said than done. Well, this is a certain issue of a parent company. Who owns Daily Variety? Well, it's company international. Dutch, actually. Read Elsevier, Inc. Elsevier, Inc.? Elsevier. Inc. Okay, that's how you pronounce that? I thought it was Reed Elsevier. Elsevier. Inc. Okay, well, you got to call up your parent company and, get, and you got to get out of this. Why don't you call them up and call me back? Okay? I got to take another call. Will do. Thanks, chap. Ring you up later. Okay, the Barely Legal Radio program continues. Joe Escalante here. This is Showbiz Legal Advice. We do it every Friday at this time. Indie 1031, Weezer.com, iHeartRadio, Indie, all that kind of stuff. Sundays at KFWB, AM 980 in Los Angeles. It is free. It is worth every penny. 